Well, I do hope you all remembered to put your clocks back last night. I always think it's uh, nicer when they go backwards because you get an extra hour in bed. But anyway, it's morning now and a very, very good morning to you all. I'm Deacon Sally. Uh, thank you for joining us here in Jersey in the Channel Islands. You're all very, very welcome to join with us and share in our worship this morning. Uh, we have Reverend Jenny with us this morning who will be bringing us her thoughts on uh, the passage from Deuteronomy where uh, God at the end of Moses' life shows him the promised land uh, before Moses departs this earthly life. And Jenny will be thinking about that, particularly thinking about the, that in the light of the pandemic, in thinking about promises uh, not yet fulfilled and leaving tasks unfinished. So we look forward to Jenny's word to us this morning. We also have um, Doreen from our Messy Church team in St. Peter who will be bringing us our Bible reading this morning. And there'll be another chance to see uh, Jenny's sister and nephew, Rebecca and Will, as they will be singing one of our songs this morning. But before we begin all of that, let's just pause for a moment and gather our thoughts as we come to worship God. We'll just have a pause for a moment where you can uh, light your candle if you want to. And then we'll begin in prayer. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. God of all that has been, all that is and all that will be. We have been born and one day we will die. But today is a day when we are here, here to worship and praise you. Accept, O oh God, all that we bring and all that we offer this morning. In the name of Christ. Amen. And so as we think of Moses this morning and we think of how the angel of the Lord appeared to him from uh, within the flames, within a burning bush and how Moses was told that he was standing on holy ground. We sing this morning our first hymn, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here.
And so we continue in prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, you are the source of all life, the fount of all wisdom, and the wellspring of all grace. Your days are without end, your loving mercies without number. We depend on you and remember your goodness to us and to those who have gone before. Your story has been told in every generation. The Lord Jesus Christ lived among us, full of grace and truth. Revealing your tender mercy, he healed the sick, comforted the broken and the lost. In humility, he washed the feet of his disciples, calling us to follow his example as one who served. You are our God ahead of us, leading us, guiding us and calling us. You are the Lord God the all-wise, the all-compassionate, and we lift our hearts in worship today and forever. Amen. Loving God, forgive us when we fail to trust in your promises to us. Forgive us when we seek to control others and deny your promises to them. Loving God, we are not always the people we want to be, nor the people we ought to be. And yet you promise us forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, who is faithful and just, assures us of pardon and peace. Amen. Thanks be to God. And we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us in whatever form or language is most familiar to yourself. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. There's a favourite uh, passage of mine in the Bible it comes from the book of Numbers. It's the passage where uh, the Israelites in the wilderness are bemoaning the fact that they haven't got meat to eat and they actually say that they uh, would have been better off if, if God had left them back in Egypt. And God hears this uh, moaning and so he promises them meat not just for one or two days but for a whole month. And then we hear Moses complaining uh, that ha has asking how is he going to provide this meat for them? Moses says there's not enough flocks, there's not enough herds, there's not enough fish in the sea to be able to do this. And God simply poses a question to Moses. He says, is there a limit to my power? And we have found that since the uh, time of lockdown and the COVID restrictions, we have seen God's power at work. I work alongside and support a messy church team in St. Peter. Uh, but at the moment, we're not meeting for messy church because we feel to have to restrict the families and keep them separate and keep to all, the, all the craft materials separate and all the rest of it would turn it into rather formal church. And so we have decided instead, and this was something that was laid on the heart of our leader, team leader, Katie, that we will do messy church in a bag. It's kind of a takeaway version of messy church. 
Each month uh, we print out a Bible story for the children with a, a reflection on the back to help them ponder on the story. And we pack the bag with a range of activities uh, that reinforce this story and uh, help the children to understand the story more fully and to reflect on it more fully. And what we have found is that um, these bags are not just being collected by people who would normally attend Messy Church, but also families that we have not come into contact with before. Uh, the, the families who normally attend, they have found that their neighbours and their friends and their work colleagues are asking if they too can have uh, the bag so that they can share it with their children. We're finding that whole families now are sitting down together in the safety of their own homes and they are reflecting on the stories of God. And so uh, at Messy Church we realise and we declare that certainly there is no limit to God's power. There is nothing that God cannot do and there's no one that God cannot reach. And so this morning, uh, we're offering you a chance to see again Rebecca and Will. They are Jenny's sister and um, her sister's son. And they are going to sing a song for us now, one that we love to sing at Messy Church. Our God is so great, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing that he cannot do. Are you ready, Will? Yeah. My subscribing but um hitting the like button and turn on all notifications so you can never miss on another out on another church video well thank you will and rebecca and now as i said earlier doreen who is a very very valued member of our messy church team is going to bring us our bible reading and then we will go straight over to Reverend Jenny for her reflections on that reading. Thank you, Doreen. The reading today is taken from Deuteronomy 34, verses 1 to 12. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the Western Sea, the Negab and the plain, that is the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zor. The Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in a valley in the land of Moad, opposite Beth Peor, but no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired and his vigour had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, 
was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. And the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequaled for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land and for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you heard of what a thin place is? Christians describe them as places on earth where it feels heaven is almost touching the earth. And the presence of God is really real and it's mingling into one. They call them thin places because whatever it is that separates heaven from earth, that place, that thing, is really, really thin. Can you think of a place like that? A lot of people say that the Isle of Iona and Holy Island are two such thin places. Where have you really encountered God? The presence of God. Unexpectedly. And you found yourself in a thin place. I remember one of those times for me. I was on mission in Jordan a long time ago in 2004. And the incredible thing about Jordan is it's actually full of holy sites. I remember being taken around with my friend and he said, oh yeah, you see over there, you see that white dome? That's Uriah the Hittite's tomb. You know, as in Uriah the Hittite from Bathsheba. I was like, mind blown. You see that valley over there? Yeah, that's uh, that's the valley where David was hiding from Saul when they were chasing each other and hiding. It goes on and on and on. That is the, va- that is the country of Jordan. It's amazing. My favourite unexpected holy site which turned out to be a thin place for me, was climbing up a mountain called Mount Nebo. It was a tiny detour and we arrived at the top and there was a strong, tall, bronze sculpture, which looked like a cross and a staff with a serpent tightly wrapped around it. We gazed up at the sculpture and then our eyes were captivated by what we saw sumptuous land with small rolling valleys, the sea on the horizon and bountiful fields. And it was the first time for me that I'd seen Israel, the promised land. My friend said to me, what you can see is the promised land and the place where Moses died. Somewhere around this mountain are his bodies his bones, they're buried deep within. We haven't looked, we don't want to disturb them. But this was the fulfilment of the promise of God, that Moses would see the promised land before he died. And this is what he saw and the landscape hasn't changed since that day when he died. I was overwhelmed (laughs) with emotion and I felt the presence of God Cover me in my insignificance. And my friend continued, the government decided to mark this place a few years ago and they commissioned a sculpture to be made. And it's based on the story of the Israelites being naughty in the desert and they were bitten by state snakes. You remember the passage. And they had to come to Moses and look at his staff to be healed. Can you see it's a staff and a snake intertwined, he asked. But now if you look, you don't look to the staff to be healed. You look to the cross and you look to Jesus. So you can understand why I have a soft spot for this place, right? The passage we heard today, this passage from Moses, challenges us because we are forced to confront some really, really difficult issues. Number one, death. Number two, 
promises of God not yet fulfilled. And number three, leaving tasks unfinished. Number one, death, the pandemic. The year 2020 is going to go down in history for many, many reasons, and you don't need me to tell you why. But as we creep into winter and march in towards the end of October, the church year also takes a sudden shift. Whilst the rest of the world gets obsessed with Halloween and the commercial, commercial entity that has become that time, faithful Christians will remember All Souls Day and give thanks for the saints who've gone before us and remember we are mortals on that same journey. That same journey that their human, their human bones, their bodies, the saints have gone before us, have already completed. One of the challenges that the pandemic has brought to our modern society is our dislike about talking about death. I, I've upset a lot of people <laughs> by proclaiming I'm not scared of COVID-19 because I have no fear in death. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not a mask denier <laughs> or, and I don't do stupid things to put myself or other people at risk, but I don't fear death. I'm not frightened of it because I am a Christian. I believe in the power of God and I believe everything that has been promised to me. I have no fear in death. I'm inspired by the Christian martyrs who've walked before us without fear to their end. Not just the saints that have gone before us, but those who will lose their life today because of Christ's namesake. For those who are arrested and tortured, they have no fear in death. Blessed are those who are persecuted for my name's sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So I wonder what would our conversations look like if we changed the tone of our chats and proclaim the good news that we have as Christians and say, I'm not scared of COVID-19 because I do not fear death. I am a Christian and I do not fear death. Number two, promises not yet fulfilled. You have to hand it to Moses, right? <laughs> he followed God and did some pretty incredible things throughout his life. And he led a group of wandering people who were quite naughty from time to time, let's face it. All the time trusting that God would come through with his promises. And just as he's about to die and the final promise hasn't come through, God delivers in the final hour. What are you waiting for from God? Are you doubting God's promise to you? Are you expecting God to work according to your timetable? <laughs> I know I am. But God didn't let Moses down promise was made and it was kept. I'm not sure what Moses was expecting or wanted but having stood on Mount Nebo myself, if that was the last thing that I saw for the first time before I went to glory, that thin place, I couldn't think of anything better. God will come through and God's promises to you. You might not be able to hear it or understand it right now, but trust me, trust me. God will honour and surprise you in ways that you can't possibly imagine. God will honour your prom those promises and blow you away, blow your mind and go beyond all expectations. And this is what we can learn from that passage. God will come through. Trust me. Number three. Leaving tasks unfinished. This is a constant conversation in my marriage. Hun, can you do this for me? Can you do this one thing for me, please? Paul goes away and does it. Comes back. I have a look. 
you've not done it right. You've not done it right. You should have done it this way. <laughs> Does that sound familiar to anyone? What's even harder is when you have a project or a situation or something and you need to let go. I don't know what it might be. For ministers like myself, it's often churches and people. For you, it might be allowing someone at work to actually do their job. To trust someone to do that task or just even accept that this big thing might not be your job to complete. You got it started, but maybe someone else needs to finish it. And that's hard. And I'm challenged by this passage because Moses is a control freak, a bit like me, but he has to trust and let go. He has to trust that Joshua is going to carry on the hard work that he started. It might not be done in the same way, but he has to let go and trust. And there's the challenge, isn't it? Trusting other people to do something that you started and also letting go. What are you holding on to? What's gripping you right now? What do you need to let go? Moses walked the mountain to his death to be received into the arms of God. He trusted in those final footsteps that God would deliver God's promise. That he would see the promised land and accepted that he could do no more and let Joshua take over. What do you need to do to become like Joshua? Does fear of death grip you as a Christian? Do you doubt God's promises? Who do you not trust at the moment? And what do you need to let go of? The Israelites looked to the staff of Moses to be healed. We look to the power of Jesus to find our peace and our healing. So take your worries and your problems to the foot of the cross of Christ. And if you're wrestling with something, don't wrestle alone. Don't struggle alone, particularly at this time of All Saints and as we're coming up to Christmas. Talk to someone, call your minister, your pastoral visitor, somebody that you trust. But believe me when I say, you are not alone. Amen. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises, standing on the promises, Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing on the promises, standing on the promises. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord. Bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord. Overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises, standing on the promises, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing on the promises, standing on the promises. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises, I cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my 
my Savior, standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. And so now we come to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for all that you have promised us through Christ Jesus and for your faithfulness in all your dealings with us. And God of all hope, we call on you today. We pray not only for the victims of coronavirus, but also victims of war and violence, famine and natural disaster. And we pray especially for all who are refugees. We pray for governments around the world, guide them in their decision making. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray not only for people unable to attend worship currently, whether online or physically, but for all who can never meet together in your name. We remember especially those who are persecuted and dying for their faith. By the power of the Holy Spirit, help us to bring an end to injustice, intolerance and discrimination. We pray not only for those feeling isolated at this present time, but for all whose loneliness and isolation will remain once this crisis is past. We remember especially the homeless, the voiceless, those suffering from mental health issues and those who are abused. By the power of the Holy Spirit, help us to bring an end to their suffering. We pray not only for those suffering from the coronavirus, but for all who are ill particularly those whose treatment has had to be postponed at present, causing anxiety for them and their families. We remember especially all those who work in health care and other essential services. By the power of the Holy Spirit, unite us all in seeking to protect the vulnerable and stopping this virus from spreading further. We pray not only for all who mourn the loss of their loved ones, but also for all who grieve for broken relationships and for all who are suffering from loss of employment, home and identity. By the power of the Holy Spirit, help us to recognise the needs of others and inspire us to share of ourselves, our time and our material wealth. I'll leave a space now for you to take time to pray for people in situations that are particularly on your hearts this morning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers, which are offered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, no guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. We sing our final hymn. And it's brought to us by the uh, National Methodist Choir of Great Britain, another chance to hear their rendition of 
in Christ alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand, oh, 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 o
Well, thank you to everyone who has uh, facilitated our worship this morning and thank you to all of you out there for joining us. Now ascending prayer. Holy God, we remember that you have promised us that nothing will separate us from your love demonstrated to us in Jesus Christ. Turn our eyes, our hearts and our minds to you and give us grace to love and serve you to the praise of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us, those whom we love and those who we are called to love this day and forevermore. Amen. How wonderful, how glorious is the love of God bringing healing, forgiveness. Wonderful love, how wonderful, how glorious is the love of God Oh, how